Alberto represents kind of the freedom almost in 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 Luca and how Alberto can can help Luca, you know, come out of his shell and uh, try new things. And uh, that's kind of the reason they they become really good friends is because, you know, Alberto is so so eager that that Luca needs to, you know, try this try this new stuff and and do all this and do all that. And you know, Luca obviously is timid, but at the same time, you know, he's he's really he's really intrigued by it, and he really wants to he really wants to venture out with with his new friend Alberto. Luca and Alberto really really want to get a Vespa. They have like a poster of it on the wall of their of their little fort base, and they they actually end up making a, a little makeshift Vespa out of like planks of wood and like sheets of metal, and it's pretty dangerous, but they, they have a blast, uh, they have a blast uh, riding it all over the place. Julia is really outgoing and, you know, she, she's a big adventurer and she also loves learning, uh, you know, about, about, about the world. And she only comes to Puerto Rosso uh, every summer, so she, she's kind of like, you know, more of an underdog when she comes there, you know, and I guess that can be, that's why she's a, you know, a bigger target for, for bullying. And that's kind of why, you know, she, she feels for Luke and Alberto because, you know, she sees, she kind of like sees herself in them. Emma Berman plays, plays Julia and she has this really, really cool voice so that when she, uh, when she, when she voices her character, it adds, it adds, you know, a lot of personality to it and it sounds amazing. Enrico is such a cool director to work with because, you know, he, he's, he's got a really playful, you know, directing style where you know we can just like mess around and we, we get to do a lot of improv which is my favorite you know and be able to be able to do an improv improv in a pixar film to you know add, add a, a new level of realism is, is a lot of fun to do and i i really like uh, his directing methods luca is about a boy who's curious and wants to see what it is like above the surface, he lives under the sea, and he's finding all these little bits and pieces, of, like little remnants of what humanity is like, and he, he is so eager to go explore, and he's got this curiosity, this burning curiosity, so he goes towards the surface and he meets this boy named Alberto, and they become friends, and, and Alberto's kind of just like a, uh, he's kind of a little bit of a, a motley little scoundrel guy, and so he's like, look, I want, look at this thing. This is called a Vespa, and we're going to build this together. And he's got, they both uh, grow this obsession for, for this Vespa and getting a Vespa. And Alberto is, is totally like this free-spirited, super creative, uh, curious guy. Um, and he's not afraid of anything. He's fearless. Um, and I think that, that inspires Luca to... to hone in on that of himself that he didn't really know was a part of him until he met Alberto. But he knew that something, there was something attractive about that quality. So there's a lot of funny sequences. I love the dynamic between Luca and Alberto. It's kind of, um, they balance off each other really, really well. It's like the two personalities are really unique and really special and really particular to each other. Um, and comedically, it, it's like really perfect match. It's stunning. It, the, the, okay, so the colors, the colors are so vibrant and, and uh, the color of the sea and the sparkliness of the sea. And the, okay, f the, the greatest thing about, one of the greatest things about this animation in this movie is that the food looks so good. The food looks so good. And the bike and the, the, the reds and the, and the paint on the buildings and like the brick and the, everything is beautiful. And even the rain is beautiful and the, and the color of the sky and the trees so bright and beautiful and colorful it makes you feel so alive and immersed in, in it, in the world. This movie, Luca, will, without a shadow of a doubt, transport you to this awesome, vibrant, lively summer in Porto Rosso, in Italy. Um, it's, it's so immersive. Watching it, I felt like I was there. Well, because <laughs> I technically was. But um, it was... It's, it's, it's definitely such an epic ride. And being alongside Luca and, and Alberto and Julia, the, this, this, uh, this, these crazy kids, this Motley crew, and, and, and learning about themselves and about the area and about what they want, um, definitely makes you feel like, like you can relate.
Julia Marcavaldo is around 12 years old. She lives on the Italian Rivera, and she's a really awkward and goofy character. She's really determined, and I actually relate to her in some ways because we're both pretty outgoing, and we love to make new friends, and we like to learn new things and go on adventures. Oh, this whole film is just a fun adventure. I mean, we, uh, one of my favorite parts is that we get to see the character transformation of Luca from like this shy kid at the beginning who just stays in the water and follows all the rules, this really rule-oriented kid. And then he becomes like this fun adventurer while still like staying true to his, um, his personality. Alberto is played by Jack Dylan Grazer, and I love the confidence because like, he teaches Luca lots of things, and while he may not be right, his character is just so convincing. I almost wanted to like, change how I look at things and look at it through Alberto's lens because of how Jack Dylan Grazer brought out that confidence. It was definitely really, really good. The story has some really great lessons to it, like never judge a book by its cover, and I hope uh, both audiences, old and young, learn to silencio Bruno and go with their heart's desire and follow their dreams and challenge themselves to make new friends and accept others for who they are and not how they look on the outside. Lorenzo is Luca's father and he is well-intended um, unlike his probably overprotective wife, he is more detached and distracted and preoccupied with other things. Um, so the Luke is a balance. Uh, he's dealing with these two parental figures that have different philosophies and approaches. When Luca goes to the surface, um, he, he finds this new friend, uh, Alberto. And what's so amazing about that is that Alberto really, you know, is this friend that is probably the most perfect person for Luca to meet at this point in his life. And to challenge him and help him with some of his fears. But, uh, so they're kind of a, uh, an odd pair, but they serve each other very well. Daniela, who plays uh, my character's wife, is uh, played by Maya Ru Rudolph, and um, she's amazing. I mean, I, she's just great in everything she does. And uh, what I think is so funny about Maya is that she, she gives Daniela a, uh, a certain um, um, energy, but it's um, created in warmth. It's, it's a coming of age story. It's a fish out of water story. It's also a story about friendship and also maybe growing away from friends. It's uh, about finding your own path. That's what's so amazing is it's about a lot of different things and it'll hit with different people at different times um, in their lives. So I was very excited to see it because it really captures uh, a childlike imagination and a love of learning. I play Danielle, I play Luca's mom, and she's a fiercely loving, protective mother. She's trying very hard to uh, protect her son from the unknowns around them and keep him safe. And she will stop at nothing to keep her son safe. And sometimes that means that she has to pull up her sleeves and, and get right in the middle of it, which is what she does. Luca and Alberto bond over the Vespa. It's all about the Vespa. Um, it's just, it, they have Vespa fever. It's exciting, it's beautiful, it's sleek, it's, it can take you anywhere. Um, Alberto has this poster of it on the wall and they dream about the Vespa and everything they could do. And they actually physically build their own Vespa, which is 
such a beautiful and great sequence. Um, and they take it for many test drives. Um, it's really, it's actually really, really cool to watch, but that's their dream. You know, they have this big dream and the dream is to get to this Vespa. And once they have this Vespa, all their dreams will come true. They'll be able to ride it everywhere. My husband is played by the beautiful and talented Jim Gaffigan, um, who I worship and adore. Um, did a great job in playing a real despondent husband. Uh, he could have cared less about anything that Daniela said, but um, I know and love Jim very much. And um, boy, he makes me laugh. And he really made me laugh physically as a sea monster. I, I enjoyed his sort of out, out to lunch husband um, even more. Um, God, he's funny. The film was made by Enrico Casarosa, who I um, worship and adore. I loved working with Enrico and um, and he so beautifully told me the story of this film and and what he wanted to the story about this boy's life that he wanted to bring out and this idea of friendship and not just that, but it was obvious his love of the Italian seaside and this period of time. And it's I think it's really um, it's done in such a beautiful and loving way. I think it's really portrayed in this magical sort of fantastical ideal of of what childhood feels like and what um, what a time period is when you're looking at it through the lens of love. And um, um, he just made it such a, a joy to talk about. The inspiration for Luca are, are multiple, but one of the core one is um, the summers I spent with my best friend, Alberto, when we were kids. I was around 12 when I met him, and I was a timid and shy kid, and he was a bit of a troublemaker, an extrovert. He was running around, always one new thing every day. So the experience of really having a lot of fun and being kind of out of my comfort zone with someone who's very different from me. It was something I really wanted to talk about. These friendships that at that kind of right age when we're starting to kind of leave the, the, the comfort of the family, um, that challenge you, that kind of start making you find your identity. So that was really, the, 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 on a relationship uh, side, I was really interested in talking about, you know, uh, meaningful, important friendship of our youth, and and the way that they get so exalted during the summer, the fun time we had in summer. Luca really is about the coming of age of this boy who is very timid and shy, and how he meets this troublemaker, outgoing kid, and the friendship they form really kind of challenges uh, Luca, but also really enables him to embrace his own curiosity. This is a kid who's very curious about the world around it, which is a major problem when you happen to be a sea monster uh, with humans close by that could uh, find you and kill you. So this is what these two kids have in common. They're very curious about their world, but this is a forbidden and dangerous world. So during the story, we find them going to this human town, you know, and really befriending a human girl named Julia, and they have this crazy adventure there, but really the, the, the tricky thing here is like, at what point is their secret gonna be revealed? There's beautiful, beautiful Italian music from the 50s and 60s. It's very, very, um, has such a wonderful flavor. It's a little bit timeless. It's kind of a golden era of many things in Italy. Um, uh, design, you know, when we went back to thinking about the vehicles, the beautiful Fiat Cinquecentos, the Vespas of the time that just had these beautiful shapes. Um, and cinema, it's the other side of this. You know, I absolutely love the, the, the neorealist and all that era is such a golden era of cinema between Fellini, De Sica, um, the, you know, we, I love those movies. So it just felt like there was a way idiosyncratically to kind of find a timelessness in a specific period. I think there's something so wonderful about that era that to me it could feel a little bit timeless as opposed to having, you know, someone walking by with a, with a smartphone. I just felt it was something about taking it a little bit out of time 
And uh, in this kind of idiosyncratic way, I think by choosing a, a, an old era, I think we were trying to achieve that. I'm really excited for people to get to visit uh, Porto Rosso, uh, especially in a moment like this where travel is so difficult. I, I really hope this is a big dive into a beautiful aqua green uh, sea uh, of a movie. I hope it can bring them some joy and, and, and happiness and a little nostalgia. Um, and I hope that really, yeah, it makes us think about the friendships that have uh, helped us find ourselves. Um, and maybe even think a bit about like, you know, uh, about um, people that, are, that might be different from us that we might um, want to find more empathy toward. Uh, so those are the themes that we really try to put in our movie and um, I hope people get really inspired. And the other side of this, we always hope to bring, you know, joy and emotion. So you, you hope that, that you touch people's hearts. Enrico's childhood friendship inspired the story of Luca. And I think that's what makes it such a compelling film because friendship is really the core of the story. I think Enrico managed to capture characters that are feel very kid-like and um, that are something, you know, we look back at our lives and, and think of these friendships that we had as kids and, and how much they changed us and, and helped us become the people that we were meant to be. Luca is a sea monster boy. He lives under the water with his parents and grandparents, and his life is quite limited underwater. They're farmers, and he tends to the goatfish, um, but he knows to stay far away from any humans. If a boat comes, he hides, and there's just a sense of the limitation of his world. Uh, even though it's this vast ocean, they're very much uh, you know, in this one small space and, you know, trying to, to keep a low profile. So it's, it's very, um, his parents mean well, you know, they want to protect him and that's the right thing to do as a parent. Um, but Luca is so curious and he's really imagining a world beyond this small place that he lives. And that's really what drives him beyond it. This story lends itself so well to animation because you have this fantastical characters who have this amazing ability to transform from sea monster form to human form. And it's so fun to do that on camera right before our very eyes in a way that, that is stylized and can feel really fun. Um, so I think that's one of the things is just the nature of the characters is so fun. Um, I think another aspect that was really fun to capture is the dreams that Luca has. That was a, a place where we really leaned into uh, how far could we push his imagination and how far could we push it to feel different than even the stylization of the film so, so that they would feel separate and that they would feel special. Um, so I think there was a lot of things that, that were fun to be able to do, like transformation and show right on camera. You know, Enrico has this ability to to really call our attention to um, the things around us that are beautiful and worthy of our attention, um, along with creating really interesting new characters who, who exist in this world and, and who we really feel engaged with. I think he's brought such a sense of authenticity to them. And they're very kid-like, so they're very relatable. Um, and so I, I just think that, um, and, and the way this film looks, I mean, it looks like a sketch that Enrico did. If you ever see his sketches, that's what Luca looks like, and that's what Alberto looks like. And so I love that we preserved that um, design sensibility that he has in his own artwork, uh, and, and it really carries through the film. And so I think, again, like, like La Luna, it's, he really manages to boil down things that are, are such detail kind of into their essence, into the thing that makes them beautiful, the thing that makes it worth noticing. Um, you know, Porto Rosso and this movie feels like a storybook that you dive into and just get to be immersed in while you hear this story that you've never heard before. So I think it's very inventive and very interesting. Hey, stay with me as I have a cool movie extra fact. Now, the Disney film Who Framed Roger Rabbit was responsible for revitalising the Disney company's reputation for the way it combined live action and animation. The process took a long time, however. While physical filming took just over seven months, the post-production step of adding in the animation took 14 months. 
Now, wow, click here below to subscribe or on the site for more great content.